Hello, this is Francis from McCaffrey's Crafts and today I'm continuing on in my series uh, Black Torn and Faction Fighters, The History of Stick Fighting. And uh, today I'm just in looking for some wood behind me that uh, I have a, a big shed here where I kind of store all my pieces of wood and then usually on a Sunday I'll, you know, when the kids are being quiet, I'll just nip over here, look around, pick out a few pieces and uh, then that's going to be my, my work for the week. That's kind of how, how I work. But anyway, look, let's go back to the old history of faction fighting. Um, like the fair days and around fairs were very important in terms of the history of faction fighting that a lot of the main fights would have been organized around um, a fair. Now, a fair would have been done maybe on the, the seasons or, you know, there's a, uh, the end, like say, for example, in, in my hometown, there's Puck Fair, which is in August, which is you know, the end of, of harvest. And usually there's a few times a year, there's four times a year where, where kind of the main festivals used, used to go on at the time. And during these festivals, like um, they were always aligned with the religious side of things as well. So it was very holy that even though the festivals predate Christianity in Ireland, but Christianity, of course, rebranded a lot of festivals to, to give the, the, uh, the, the, the Christian kind of spin on that it was connected to it. But a lot of these festivals would have been predated even before uh, Christian times in, in Ireland. Um, so these festivals, everyone be very holy. They'd go to church wear our best clothes, very good, you know, see the family, talk to the locals, tip the hat, you know, all very polite because it's the calm before the, the storm, trust me, that before the uh, festivals would begin, everyone would be very holy, just like, you know, you see in a mafia movie, like, you know, they go to the church, they'd be very holy, respect the family, and then they go out and all hell breaks loose. But the same with the faction fighting. They knew what was coming. They knew it was a big piss up where everyone's gonna get hammered drunk, start fighting and to do various things uh, around then. So I'm taking kind of a few notes and references here as well. So let me just find it here. So in, in this book, um, The Researches in the South of Ireland, um, pu uh, published in 1824 by a guy called uh, Crofton Coker, he gives a first hand account of attending a fair in County Cork on the 23rd of June, uh, 1813. And this is in a place called uh, Guigambara, County Cork. And this place is kind of famous for where the patron saint of Cork is a guy called St. Finbar. And he had his kind of hermitage there in the sixth century. So basically he kind of was based there in the sixth century and every kind of county in Ireland or some counties will have like a, a patron saint and St. Finbar, and Finbar is like associated with, with Cork um, a lot. And uh, so anyway, going back to, to this guy's book, um, he describes like the immense, conquer the immense amount of people, like I was saying there's loads of people there. And he said they did a lot of devotional exercises in the first, uh, the, the start of the festival, the holy and the ceremony, but then the sale of whiskey, the sale of porter, um, bread, salmon, um, he reported what they were eating. He said the young people were dancing the Irish jigs, you know, the Irish music. He said there was pipe music, so there was pipe bands playing at the time, and they were crowded tents. So they obviously have erected a number of tents in and around the village for these kind of festivals. So it's just like any modern music festival, big tents, load of mu uh, music and plenty of booze. And that's, a you know, put that in the hands of violent men trained in stick fighting with sticks, you know, you're asking asking for trouble um, then in those times. So um, he says then by the evening, um, a quote from his book is, cudgels were brandished and riot and uproar followed. So he describes as well that, you know, at the end of all of this, a big fight usually took place. And interestingly enough, he went back there two years later. So he's back there in 1813. Then he went back there um, in 1815 and just to see, but... In this time, many of the patrons had been very condemned by the Catholic um, Church um, in, the, uh, in the area. And it was really the church who, you know, they saw all of this kind of social discourse that was going on. It wasn't very religious as well. Like guys were beating the, the, the living bejesus out of each other. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it wasn't going down too well. So a lot of priests would have intervened. And, you know, there's records of priests even dying at faction fighting as well, trying to, to separate them. So, you know, uh, a lot of the law and order was kept by the Irish church 
in communities at the time, you know, they're saying, look, you got to be, you know, practice good ethics and, and the Catholic faith as well. And, uh, and like, you know, the, the interesting thing is the church used to do penances against, against people that were, you know, doing a bit, bit more, um, faction fighting. Here's one I found, um, if you were faction fighting and you were identified as faction fighting, the priest wouldn't give you sacraments, you know, like Holy Communion, where a Catholic person would go into church, they would receive their Holy Communion, which is a part of, it's like a little bread wafer thing they put in their mouth and, you know, purifies them of sin and all like that. Um, so they wouldn't get their sacraments, they'd be withheld. And there's there's a, a reference here by a Const uh, Constantia Maxwell tells us that the penance for faction fighters would they had to walk, I'll quote from her book uh, or his book, twice round the chapel on bare knees. So if you're caught faction fighting and identified and you're a right messer, like you know, and the church said, right, we got to do something about this, they would let get those guys weren't allowed to go to church sacrament and they had to walk around the church twice on their bare knees. You know, that was, you know, different times, different rules. Um, you know, the church can be harsh when they, they want to be like, you know, they, they're, they're alone to themselves, you know, in, in these times anyway, in that, uh, you know, they, they were trying, you know, in their mindset, they're obviously thinking this is the only way to deal with these guys, give them some kind of penance, you know, walk around and, and, uh, you know, I found that quite interesting when I found that about, uh, you know, getting guys to walk around the church in their bare knees and don't do this again. Stop your faction fighting. Uh, but, you know, like it's it's a product of the environment, ruckus, drinking, um, skilled fighters, old feuds. Um, you know, it's just and again, if you ever go to a pub and a real Irish pub, not like one of these tourist ones just set up with fake kind of uh, feel to it but an Irish pub you drink there regularly you see the atmosphere the singing the dancing the energy the different things and you know then all of a sudden boom a fight will just break out <laughs> it'll just kick off you know it's uh it's it's something there that's kind of uh you know a bit unusual that you know Irish have the the, the fighting side as well as the, the happy jovial side as well and just like that you know they they can turn at the the, the flip of a switch but look, I'll leave you at that today I just wanted just to kind of introduce a bit about the fairs and how the church used to discipline some people and just just a few different examples and yeah continue to watch the series and i'll try to keep finding these little nuggets of things i find interesting and i'll keep posting them on youtube thank you